My name is John. Welcome to Seriously Read a Book. Uh, my daughter Rose is joining us today. Want to say hi, Rose? Hi. Today we are reading Dr. Nicholas is Ridiculous by Dan Gutman. This is one of my favorite book series. How many of these have we read, Rose? Mm. Would you would just a guess? Probably like, like five. Five? Yeah. Do you like them? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you like most about them? They're very funny. They're funny. All right, we like them because they're funny. So here we go. We're going to start out with chapter one, The Big Test. My name is AJ, and I hate tests. Tests are no fun at all. If you ask me, we should take all the tests and throw them into a giant garbage can. Wait, no, I take that back. If you ask me, we should throw all the tests into a giant paper shredder. Shredding paper's cool. Sometimes my dad lets me shred papers for him at home. I was like, I wish I could shred stuff all day long, especially tests. At school the other day, we were minding our own business when our teacher, Mr. Granite, said the most horrible thing in the history of the world. Clear off your desks. It's time for a test. What? Everybody yelled. No! Shouted Michael, who never ties his shoes. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't study for a test shouted Ryan, who will eat anything, even stuff that isn't food. <laughs> That's not fair, shouted Alexia, this girl who rides a skateboard all the time. You didn't tell us we were going to have to have a test, shouted Neil, who we call the nude kid, even though he wears clothes. Everybody was freaking out. It was like we just heard the news that a meteor was about to destroy the Earth. <laughs> That's right, sound effects by Rose. Hey, if that happened, we wouldn't have to take any more tests. Well, almost everybody was freaking out. I love tests. Rose, guess who said that? Andrea. Said Andrea Young, this annoying girl with curly brown hair. Me too. Said her crybaby friend Emily, who agrees with everything Andrea says. Tests are fun. These two, oh look, there they are. With their, with their little happy, happy, beaming eyes. Uh, they can't wait to take their tests. Those two probably study for tests when they could be watching TV or playing video games and having fun. What is their problem? <laughs> Relax, said Mr. Granite. Every student in the state is taking this test today. You don't have to study for it. The Board of Education just wants to find out how much you know. I'm Board of Education, <laughs> I announced. Mr. Granite walked around the room and put a sheet of paper on each of our desks face down. Do you all have a number two pencil? He asked. We all started giggling because Mr. Granite said, number two. Everybody knows what number two means, and it doesn't have anything to do with pencils. They should really use a different number for pencils so kids won't confuse them with the other number two. <laughs> Take your time, Mr. Granite told us. These are questions every American should be able to answer. In fact, many of these questions are given to people who want to become citizens of our country. Uh, what if I don't know the answers? I asked. Don't worry, AJ, said Mr. Granite. This test will be a piece of cake. Didn't look like a piece of cake to me. It looked like a piece of paper. What did cake have to do with taking a test, anyway? Hey, maybe we were going to get cake after we finished taking the test. When I say go, turn over your test sheet, said Mr. Granite. Ready, set, go. Chapter two, a piece of cake. I turned over my test sheet and looked at the questions. There were 14 of them. The top line said we had to fill in the blanks. I grabbed my pencil. One. Who was the first president? Well, that was easy. I wrote down the answer. Abraham Lincoln. Wrong. Next. <laughs> it's true. Number two. What is the 4th of July? Any dumb head knows that. I figured it had to be a trick question like, what color is the White House? I wrote down the answer. It's the fourth day in July. <laughs> hey, this test wasn't going to be so hard after all. Three. Where was the Declaration of Independence signed? Hmm, I had to think about that one for a minute. I've seen my mom and dad sign contracts and stuff at home. I wrote, at the bottom. Four, can you name the 13 original colonies? 
That was simple. I wrote, yes, I can. Five, what are the three branches of our government? I wasn't sure about this one. Mr. Granite once told us about three somethings, I remembered, so I wrote them down. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Where does freedom of speech come from? Any dumbhead knows that. I wrote, your mouth. Seven, name one benefit of being a citizen of the United States. Hmm, there are lots of good things about our country, but there was only one room for one answer, so I wrote, candy! <laughs> and look, it's AJ dancing with candy. <laughs> Yay. Eight, who did we fight in the Revolutionary War? I had no idea who we fought in the Revolutionary War. I looked around to see if I could copy the answer from somebody else. Little Miss Know-It-All was sitting in front of me, and she knows everything. Psst, I whispered to Andrea. Who did we fight in the Revolutionary War? I'm not telling, Andrea whispered back. That would be cheating, Arlo. She calls me by my real name because she knows I don't like it. I leaned over to Ryan, who was sitting next to me. Psst. Who did we fight in the Revolutionary War? The Galactic Empire, Ryan whispered back to me. Ryan knows just about everything there is to know about Star Wars, so he had to be right. I wrote down, The Galactic Empire. No talking, please, said Mr. Granite. Nine, who becomes president of the United States if the president should die? Easy. I wrote, Chuck Norris. Oh. Ten, <laughs> who makes the laws in the United States? Again, I wrote, Chuck Norris. I was almost finished with the test. Oh. Eleven, who said, give me liberty or give me death? I leaned over to Alexia, who was sitting on my other side. Psst, I whispered. Who said, give me liberty or give me death? Henry. Alexia whispered. Henry who? Patrick. Alexia whispered. Well, which is it? I asked her. Henry or Patrick? Both. No talking, please, said Mr. Granite. I wrote, Henry and Patrick. Twelve. What are the duties of Congress? I giggled because duties sounds like duties. <laughs> and we're not supposed to talk about that in school. But all I could think about was a bunch of politicians sitting on toilet bowls. I wasn't sure what to write, so I just put down number two. Thirteen, who invented the light bulb? Hmm, I had no idea. Psst, I whispered to Michael, who was, oh, who was sitting behind me. Who invented the light bulb? Bob Lightbulb, he whispered back. Bob Lightbulb? I never heard of anybody named Bob Lightbulb. Michael may have been yanking my chain, but I know that a lot of stuff is named after the people who invented it, like McDonald's. And that vacuum cleaner was named after President Hoover. Maybe Michael was right. I wrote, Bob Lightbulb. 14. Who helped the pilgrims when they came to America? Hmm. When the pilgrims came to America, they probably had to chop down trees, build their houses, and work on all kinds of do-it-yourself projects like that. So I, So there could only be one possible answer. I wrote down, Home Depot. <laughs> Finally, the dumb test was finished. Andrea was done before anybody else, of course. She was sitting there, all proud of herself. Mr. Granite came around and collected our papers. Now that wasn't so bad, was it? He asked. It was a piece of cake, Andrea announced. Why is everybody always talking about cake? And why can't a truck full of cakes fall on Andrea's head? Hm. Oh, and... AJ put a little asterisk there, and so those little asterisks, that's a little footnote, so you go down to the bottom of the page, and it says, hey, where's Dr. Nicholas? I thought this book was supposed to be about Dr. Nicholas. I want my money back. AJ's hilarious, he's writing the book. All right, chapter three, bad news. After, if, oh, if you guys happen to see a cat walking around, that's our cat, Salinger. He's an explorer today. All right, chapter three, bad news. After a few days, we all forgot about that dumb test. Life went on, Andrea was annoying, as usual. I had a peewee football game and my team won. Ryan had his birthday and my mom brought in brownies for the whole class. A week later, Mr. Granite was trying to teach us math when an announcement came over the loudspeaker. 
All classes report. Please report to the all-purpose room for an assembly. Not again, yelled Mr. Granite. Every time he tries to teach us math, we get called to an assembly. We had to walk a million hundred miles to the all-purpose room, which has a dumb name because you can't go scuba diving in there. Neil the nude kid was the line leader. Alexia was the door holder. When we got to the all-purpose room, I had to sit be between Andrea and Emily. Ugh. Andrea's elbow touched my elbow for a second. I thought I was going to die. Our principal, Mr. Klutz, was waiting for us on the stage. He has no hair at all. I mean, none. I bet his head slips off the pillow when he's trying to sleep at night. I just got the results back from the test you took last week, Mr. Klutz announced. I hope we did well, Emily whispered to Andrea. I know I got all the answers right, Andrea whispered back. I looked them up in my encyclopedia when I got home. Our school did horribly, Mr. Klutz announced. <gasps> what? Everybody gasped. Elementary school got the worst scores in the whole county, said Mr. Klutz, shaking his head sadly. I went to a meeting, and the principal of Marilla Forsyth's grade school was laughing at me. Clearly, you children don't know basic history. I hate to say this, but if we don't bring up our test scores, our school is going to be closed. I jumped up from my seat. Yay! I shouted. No more school! No more school! No more school! I figured everybody was going to jump up from their seats and start chanting. Sorry, sometimes this happens when you turn a page. The pages don't turn so great. I thought everybody was going to chant, No more school! with me. I looked around. Nobody else was standing. Nobody else was chanting. Everybody was looking at me. Oops, I hate it when that happens. I sat back down in my seat. You probably got all the answers wrong, Arlo, Andrea whispered to me. I bet that's why our school did so poorly. Your face got all the answers wrong, I whispered back at Andrea. That doesn't even make any sense, Arlo. Your face doesn't make any sense, <laughs> I told Andrea. Everybody was talking and whispering to each other until Mr. Klutz held up his hand and made a peace sign, which means... Shut up. I have decided to bring in a professor from the local college to help teach you students history, he announced. <gasps> what? Everybody gasped again. We don't want to learn history from some boring college teacher, somebody yelled. Everybody was upset, even some of the teachers. Oh, you're going to like Dr. Nicholas. Mr. Klutz told us. She's a world-famous historian who's traveled everywhere and written many books about history. She was even on Oprah. Everyone gasped and said, oh, Wow! Which is Mom upside down. What was she doing on Oprah? Asked Ryan. <laughs> she should get off Oprah, said Michael. Oprah could get hurt, said Alexia. Is Oprah okay? Said, said Emily. <laughs> Who's Oprah? I asked. <laughs> Dr. Nicholas will be coming into your classroom to teach you some basic history that everyone should know, said Mr. Klutz. Then a week from today, you'll get a chance to take that test over again. I think with the help of Dr. Nicholas, you're going to score much higher, and I'll be able to laugh at those other principals. That will be the icing on the cake. More cake? Why is everybody always talking about cake? It's so weird. It's so weird, isn't it, Rose? <clears throat> and now... Mr. Klutz said with a big sweep of his arm, I'd like to introduce Dr. Nicholas! Yay! Yay. Chapter 4, The Good Old Days. Yeah, want to make some clapping sounds, Rose? Yeah, yeah, and you want to scream and shout? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Nicholas came out on stage. She looked really old. She had, oh, here's a picture of her. There she is, looking old, walking with a cane. Very, very old. Very old. She had white hair tied up in a bun in the back. And what's up with that? Buns are for putting your burger on, not for putting on the back of your head. And she walked with a cane really slowly. 
I've seen glaciers move faster than Dr. Nicholas. I could run around the block in the time it took her to get to the middle of the stage. Wow, that lady is old, <laughs> said Ryan. She's even older than Mr. Docker, I whispered. Mr. Docker's our science teacher. I thought he was old, but Dr. Nicholas looks old enough to be Mr. Docker's mother. She must know a lot about history because she's about a million hundred years old, whispered Neil the nude kid. Yeah, she probably lived through most of it, whispered Alexia. Mr. Klutz told us to give Dr. Nicholas a round of applause, so we clapped our hands in circles. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask Dr. Nicholas? Said Mr. Klutz. Yeah, how old are you? I asked. That's not a nice question to ask a person, AJ. <laughs> said Mr. Klutz. Oh, I don't mind, said Dr. Nicholas. I'm 92 years old and proud of it. How old are you, young man? I'm eight years old. Eight, said Dr. Nicholas. When I was your age, I was nine. Everybody laughed, even though she didn't say anything funny. Did you ever meet Abraham Lincoln? Said Alexia. No, said Dr. Nicholas. But years ago, I drove one of his convertibles. Were you alive when there were dinosaurs? <coughs> Asked M Michael. Oh, yes, said Dr. Nicholas. In fact, I used to ride a dinosaur to school. I'm pretty sure that Dr. Nicholas was yanking our chain. Everybody knows there were no schools in dinosaur times. Besides, it would be hard to ride a dinosaur. They don't even make saddles for them. Dr. Nicholas would have had to ride the dinosaur bareback. And here is what it might have looked like if Dr. Nicholas had ridden a dinosaur bareback to school. When Abraham Lincoln was alive, after the dinosaurs. That's right. So. This is true. It would be hard for her to be hanging around with Abraham Lincoln and dinosaurs, right? But maybe she was telling the truth. No. Because old people don't usually, you don't think so. Because maybe, because old people don't usually make jokes. That's the first rule of being old. We went out to play, replied Dr. Nicholas. <gasps> what? There was a buzz in the all-purpose room. Everybody was talking to each other. You mean in the outdoors? Asked Andrea. Yes. Everybody gasped again. <gasps> Didn't you get sunburned? Asked Andrea. Didn't your clothes get dirty? Asked Emily. What about the bugs? Wasn't it dangerous? Were you afraid of getting hit by a car? Asked Neil the nude kid. No, she was afraid of getting hit by a dinosaur. I told Neil. Oh, it was a wonderful time, said Dr. Nicholas. My friends and I used to play hopscotch, marbles, or hide and go seek. My favorite thing to do was jump rope. Do you ever jump rope? Oh yeah, said Ryan. My sister has an app called Jump Rope Simulator on her iPad. It's awesome. Dr. Nicholas, were you on your school jump rope team? Asked Andrea. Oh, we didn't have a team, said Dr. Nicholas. We just jumped rope for the fun of it, out in the street. <gasps> you played in the street? We all shouted. Now I knew she was yanking our chain. You would have to be crazy to play in the street. I bet she made up all that stuff about riding dinosaurs in Abraham Lincoln's convertible. My friends and I would jump rope anywhere, Dr. Nicholas told us. In fact, I feel like jumping rope right now. Uh -huh. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Dr. Nicholas pulled a rope out of her pocket, then she swung it over her head and started jumping over it. Old lady jumping rope, that's like not possible. Dr. Nicholas is ridiculous. Name of the book. <laughs> name of the book. That's the name yeah. of the book right there. That is it. Chapter 5, our first history lesson. Oh, Rose likes this one. Chapter 5, our first history lesson. After lunch, Dr. Nicholas came into our classroom. Clear off your desks, said Mr. Granite. It's time for our first history lesson with Dr. Nicholas. Yay! shouted all the girls. Boo! shouted all the boys. Ugh! I hate history. History is dumb. Why do we have to learn about stuff that already happened? Who cares about a bunch of dead dudes who died a million hundred years ago? 
Mr. Granite said he would be back in half an hour. He went to the teacher's lounge, which is a secret room near the front office where no kids are allowed. My friend Billy, who lives around the corner, told me the teachers go to the teacher's lounge to relax in a big hot tub while servants in bathing suits feed them grapes. Dr. Nicholas picked up a marker and wrote, history is fun, exclamation point, on the whiteboard. Today, she said, we are going to learn about the history of the toilet bowl. What? Toilet bowls have a history? Asked Ryan. Of course, said Dr. Nicholas. Everything has a history. Toilet bowls are disgusting, said Emily, wrinkling up her nose. I thought history was all about wars, said Andrea, and the great men and women who changed the world. History is about everything that came before us and made the world what it is today, said Dr. Nicholas, and that includes toilet bowls. Did you ever hear the story of Tom Crapper? Everybody laughed because Dr. Nicholas said the word crapper. My mom told me that's a bad word that I should never say to anybody. Wait, 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 wait. What's up, Rose? Side note, don't say that. <laughs> Side note, don't say it right. Side note, don't just walk around after watching this video and say crapper, crapper, crapper. Even if you're referring to Tom Crapper. Everybody laughed because Dr. Nicholas said the word. My mom told me that's a bad word that I should never say to anybody. Wait a minute. Neil said, jumping out of his seat. Are you going to tell us that the guy who invented the toilet bowl was named Crapper? No, said Dr. Nicholas. Simple toilet bowls have been around for many centuries. The first toilet you could flush was invented back in 1596 by a man named John Harrington. So the toilet bowl was invented by a guy named John. That made sense. That's right. People say, all right, Rosie, people say I'm going to go to the John, right? And yeah. your name is John. And my name is John. Sometimes people say, oh, John's in the John. Ha, 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 What did Tom Crapper do then? Asked Michael. Everybody laughed because Michael said the word Crapper again. It's impossible to say the word Crapper without <laughs> laughing. It's the first rule of being a good kid. Crapper. Bah! Tom, Tom Crapper was born in 1836 in England, Dr. Nicholas told us. His father was a steamboat captain. When Tom was 14, he went to work for a plumber in London. By the time he was 25, he owned his own plumbing shop. Back in those days, people didn't even talk about toilets, and only rich people owned one. What did everybody else use? asked Ryan. Often, they just used a hole in the ground said Dr. Nicholas. Gross! Everybody shouted. During the 1880s, Tom Crapper improved on the flushing toilet bowl, said Dr. Nicholas. He also opened up a shop and sold toilet bowls to the public. For the first time, regular people could go to the store and buy a toilet bowl. And the rest is indoor plumbing history. And there she is, teaching all about the toilet bowls. And I guess it's a picture of Tom Crapper. Oh, and here's a little footnote. I dare you to stand up right now, wherever you are, and shout, Hooray for indoor plumbing. Hooray for indoor plumbing! <laughs> Rose is doing it. Wow, we all said, which is mom upside down. Today, of course, we all have toilet bowls in our own homes, said Dr. Nicholas, and we owe it all to Tom Crapper. I jumped up from my seat. Hooray for Tom Crapper! Crapper, 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 crapper. <laughs> I figured everybody was going to jump up from their seats and start chanting crapper with me. I looked around. Nobody else was standing. Nobody else was chanting. Everybody was looking at me. I hate it when that happens. I sat back down in my seat. I still say toilet bowls are disgusting, <laughs> said Emily. You know what's even more disgusting than toilet bowls? Said, asked Dr. Nicholas. What? We all asked. No toilet bowls! <laughs> she said, imagine how the world would be different if we didn't have toilet bowls. 
we would probably still be using a hole in the ground, said Neil the Nude Kid. Dr. Nicholas told us lots more cool stuff about the history of toilet bowls. The girls were grossed out, but all the boys thought it was hilarious. Just about anything to do with toilet bowls is hilarious. That's when the door opened, Mr. Granite came back in. I couldn't believe a half hour had gone by so fast. I guess our history lesson is over, said Dr. Nicholas. Yay, shouted all the girls. Boo, shouted all the boys. We want to learn more about the history of toilet bowls, said Ryan. Yeah, toilet bowls are cool, said Michael. Who invented toilet paper, Dr. Nicholas? Asked Neil the nude kid. We can discuss that another time, she said as she left the room. Mr. Granite told us to open our math books, but I couldn't stop thinking about Tom Crapper and his toilet bowl. That's when I came up with the funniest joke in the history of the world. Do you know what Tom Crapper used to draw his first toilet bowl? A number two pencil. <laughs> get it. No wonder I'm in the Gifted and Talented program. I should get the Nobel Prize for that one. That's a prize they give out to people who don't have bells. That's true, it's not true. All right, this is the last one. It's the last chapter that we that I'm going to read. This is chapter six, our second chapter history six. lesson. You ready? <laughs> Here we go. Chapter six, our second history lesson. My name is AJ, and I love history. History is cool. I had no idea that you could learn about the history of the toilet bowl and stuff. The next day, right after we finished pledging the allegiance, Dr. Nicholas came into our classroom again. It's time for another history lesson, said Mr. Granite. Yay, shouted all the boys. Boo, shouted all the girls. Mr. Granite went to the teacher's lounge and said he'd be back in a half an hour. What are we going to learn about today, asked Dr. Nicholas. The history of the urinal? Can, can we learn about the history of snot, asked Michael. I've always wondered where it came from. It comes from your nose, dumb head. That's right. Comes from your nose, dumb head, said Neil the nude kid. Aw, snap, said Ryan. Will you teach us about the history of farting? I asked. I bet that's really interesting. We also suggested that Dr. Nicholas teach us about the history of burping, maggots, snakes, and barf. <laughs> Boys are gross, said Andrea. I don't think I like history anymore. Me neither, said Andrea, who always agrees with everything Andrea says. That's too bad, said Dr. Nicholas, because today we're going to learn about the history of... Barbie dolls. Barbie! What? Barbie? I don't want to learn about the history of Barbie. Barbie is for girls. I love Barbie! Andrea shouted, all excited. Me too! Said Emily. Barbie has a history? Oh, yes, said Dr. Nicholas. Everything has a history. It all started in a California garage back in the 1940s. Me and the guys covered our ears and made humming noises so we couldn't, didn't have to hear about the history of Barbie. <laughs> but it didn't work. I still heard every word. Back in those days, Ruth and Elliot Handler owned a company called Mattel that made picture frames, said Dr. Nicholas. Isn't Mattel a toy company? asked Alexia. It wasn't back then said Dr. Nicholas, but they used the extra scraps of wood to make doll furniture. Soon they discovered that they were making more money from the doll furniture than the picture frames, so they switched to making toys. That's interesting, said Andrea. Tell us more, said Emily. I thought I was gonna die. Back then, Dr. Nicholas went on, most dolls were baby dolls. But Ruth and Elliot Handler went on a trip to Switzerland, and one day they saw an adult doll called Lily in a store. They brought one home for their daughter, and do you know what their daughter's nickname was? Dumbhead Ugly Face, I guessed. You are so immature, Arlo, said Andrea. I bet their daughter's nickname was Barbie. That's right, said Dr. Nicholas. So in 1959, Ruth and Elliot decided to make the first Barbie doll. It was 11 and a half inches tall and it sold for $3. It became the most popular doll in the world. Two years later, they came out with Barbie's boyfriend, Ken, and he was named after their son. 
Dr. Nicholas went on and on talking about the history of Barbie. I thought the half an hour would never end. I kept looking at the clock and waiting for Mr. Grant to come back from the teacher's lounge. Are Ruth and Elliot Handler still alive? Asked Andrea. No, said Dr. Nicholas. Ruth passed away in 2002 and Elliot died in 2011. But Barbie lives on. Mattel has sold more than a billion Barbie dolls and every three seconds another one is sold. History is interesting, said Little Miss Perfect. I hate history. Oh, I almost forgot, Dr. Nicholas said. After a few years, Elliot decided that he wanted a toy for boys, so he came up with the idea of real-looking little metal cars. And in 1968, Hot Wheels was born. <gasps> what? The same people who invented Barbie also invented Hot Wheels? Tell us about the history of Hot Wheels, said Ryan. Yeah, shouted all the boys. Well, it all started back in... Dr. Nicholas didn't get a chance to finish her sentence because Mr. Granite came back from the teacher's lounge. I'm afraid we're out of time. We'll learn more about history tomorrow. Yay, everybody shouted. I'm really glad that we're learning all about history, said Andrea. But we need to prepare for the big test. Yeah, if we don't do better on the test next week, the school will be closed, said Alexia. Don't worry about that silly test, said Dr. Nicholas. It'll be a piece of cake. More cake? Maybe they were going to give us a test with all the questions written in the icing of a cake. At Ryan's birthday party last year, there was a cake with a photo of Ryan's face on it. I got to eat Ryan's eyeball. It was cool. All that talk about cake was getting me hungry. That was good, because it was time for lunch. And y'all, that is chapters one through six. That was chapters one through six. We just read chapters one through six of Dr. Nicholas is Ridiculous by Dan Gutman. This is a wonderful series. Uh, check it out at the library. Uh, oh, if you like the video, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Wanna say bye, Rose? Bye. Bye.